TV streaming sticks have come a really long way and now offer a ton of new features at a substantially lower price. On top of that, they're more reliable and just easier to use in general. But which one's actually the best one to buy? With so many options out there, it can be really intimidating to decide between the Chromecast and the Roku and the Android TVs, and there's so many different options. But in this video, I'm gonna break down my top five picks for the best streaming sticks that I've tested out, and I'll explain why each of them ranks in five all the way up to one. And this is in order of my favorites, one being the best, but keep in mind that any one of these might be the best one for you, and I'll explain why each one has its own perks. So before I get into number five, let's quickly talk about the criteria for this video. When I say TV streaming stick, I'm talking about things like this Fire TV stick right here. So everything in this video is going to be some type of little stick or dongle about this size that can plug into the back of your TV and give any TV or projector or monitor a completely new interface. And this is going to allow you to do things like watch Netflix or Hulu on there, or you could even cancel your cable and watch like YouTube TV, watch actual live TV on there. And of course, they also have quite a few other features as well, including a voice assistant. So you could search for the weather. You could ask it to change things in your house. They work as a smart home hub. So you could change like the colors of your light bulbs or play music on your TV. So you get the idea. There's a lot of things you can do with these and everything in this video it's capable of doing all of that. But let's talk about what the top five are and what the differences are between them. Starting off with number five, this one is a little bit less exciting than the first four, but I wanna include it anyway, and this is actually the Mi TV Stick. So Mi TV Stick is in a group of a lot of different TV sticks that are operating on Android TV. Now I also chose the Mi TV Stick to be number five because it does have a very large remote compared to some of the other ones, which means you're slightly less likely to lose it because something like the Chromecast remote is so tiny that it's likely you could lose it in a couch or something. And now moving up to number four, this one is a fantastic device that performs very, very well and the reason it's not ranking higher, however, is because it is a little bit more expensive. So dollar for dollar value, it's not as good as the first three, but if money is not your biggest concern and you're willing to pay $180, this is the Apple TV 4K. So this is all around a more premium device, more premium build, and you'll know as soon as you're using it that it is a higher quality than the other devices. That doesn't necessarily mean it has a better interface, which is a big factor of the first three I'm gonna talk about, but it is going to have more storage on board, it's going to feel really fast, really smooth, and it gives you a really nice Apple experience. So if you have iPads and iPhones and little Apple Home Minis all around your house, then this is going to be a great option for you. Like I said, however, this is more expensive, selling at $180. I will put a link down in the description for all of these products. So if they go on sale for Black Friday or Prime Day or literally anything else, you can definitely go down and check out those links to see what the latest prices actually are. Now, with that being said, guys, let's move into number three. This one is one of the best sellers in the country. Tons and tons of people are buying this one. I see it absolutely everywhere, and it's a great option all around. So this one right here is the Fire TV Stick 2020. I've been testing it out, and honestly, it works really well. You have some updated specs on here, and it gives you not only a great streaming stick, but also a great remote as well. It feels more premium than the Mi TV remote, which is very, very plasticky. This one has a nice little rubbery ring on there, and it just feels very nice. It also has TV controls, so I can turn my television on or off, I can change the volume, I can mute it, and all of that's really nice, so I don't need to have two controllers or remotes next to me at all time. And on top of that, it also has a microphone on board, which allows you to use the Amazon Assistant. Now the Fire TV Stick is an excellent option because it sells for such a low price. Now, originally it's listed at $40, but I'm always seeing sales for this on Black Friday and Prime Day, and a lot of times it's selling as low as $15, which means that, I mean, in comparison to the rest of these, this is absolutely the cheapest one out there. Now, there is a reason they sell it for a lower price, and this is because Amazon really wants you to be in their ecosystem. So when you're using this, one of the drawbacks I've found is actually the interface itself. Even though it works with a lot of other platforms out there and you can get lots of third-party apps like games and different movies and stuff like that, the drawback I found was that the interface sometimes feels a little bit cluttered. It's sometimes harder to find specific titles or kind of browse and find a good content style. Uh, so when you're going through, a lot of times I find that they have a lot of like Prime video being pushed, but if you don't have Amazon Prime, which you don't need for this, they're still gonna push a lot of Amazon Prime ads to you and try to get you to upgrade. So that's kind of a drawback with the interface for now. 
but if you have this, like I said, you're definitely going to be very happy with the Fire TV stick. Now, as far as hardware goes, the Fire TV stick does an excellent job, but if you care more about the interface, which honestly I do, because I don't wanna sit here and spend a lot of time looking for titles, then the first two are definitely going to be better options for you. Now, before I get into number two, I also wanna point out that the Fire TV stick does have two options. So you can either get the Fire TV stick from 2020, which is 1080p, or you can get the 4K version for an extra $10, so $39, $49. Now, moving up to number two, again, this is going to have a better interface in my opinion, and a lot of people actually think this one here, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, should be number one, but I'm putting it number two for a reason, and I'll explain that in a second, but the Roku Streaming Stick Plus is a 4K streaming stick selling for $49, and if that's too much for you and you don't care about 4K, you could dial that back and get the Roku Streaming Stick not plus, and that's $39. So it's pretty similar to how Amazon was doing that with the regular and the plus, or the regular and the 4K, uh, especially with the same price difference there. But the Roku streaming stick has some really great features, not only with the remote, but also with the interface. So like I said, the interface is going to be a little bit more brand agnostic. It's a lot easier to find titles on any platform out there. So if you search something, they do a great thing where you can search for any title and it'll give you a list of where you can actually find that and the price for each one. So you don't end up spending too much money renting from say Amazon when you can instead get it from like Walmart's Vudu or whatever that's called. Hey guys, a quick aside, if you like the style of this video, I actually have quite a few more comparison videos coming up as we approach Black Friday. So consider going down and clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss those videos. On top of that, if you have Apple products, it's really nice to have the new update on the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, which does give you AirPlay. Uh, so obviously that's going to allow you, if you have iPads or uh, iPhones around the house, you can cast very easily with that. It's a great feature to have. And like I said before, they're definitely more brand agnostic. They work with pretty much every, every streaming service out there and it's really easy to use. Now the interface is very customizable as well. You can change like the little screensaver to show you the weather or a slideshow. So I mentioned that the Roku remote has a really nice feature that no other one in this entire video has. And that's definitely a big selling point if you're considering buying a Roku. And this is that the remote actually has a headphone jack on there, which is a fantastic feature. It's really underrated, honestly, and I love having it. And I'll explain why. So when you have a headphone jack on your remote, it actually allows you to watch TV alone if other people are in the room or in the room next, like right next to you, or if you wanna just listen to something louder, so maybe like a scary movie, Movie, having headphones is a great option for that. So I really like using that. All right, so that brings us to number one, the best TV streaming stick you can buy in 2020. In my opinion, the one that I use all the time, every day, the one that I really like to have and I recommend to everybody is the newest Chromecast with Google TV. Now, I reviewed this a couple weeks ago. If you wanna learn more about that, I'll link down below. But to summarize what I really like about this, the first thing is that, I mean, it is basically the first Chromecast, but now they added an interface. So the first Chromecast was great because any device you have, it's just so easy to cast your screen or to cast a YouTube video from anywhere in the room. As long as you're on the same Wi-Fi, you can just tap cast on any device, it'll show up on your screen, and it's just a really nice feature to have. And of course, some of the other devices have that, and that's not the only reason I like this, but now with the Google TV interface, I think they really brought it to the next level. So you have Google and YouTube, they have an algorithm running the background of this one, and they're gonna kinda collect all of this and help you find the most interesting content for you and honestly, that's kind of the whole point of a streaming stick in general. It's to really find stuff that's going to be interesting to you so you don't have to spend a lot of time browsing around the interface trying to find good titles. So Google TV, I think, does a great job with that. And on top of that, especially compared to something like the Fire TV stick, I like how clean and simple the interface is. It shows you titles. You can go through the apps if you want to. And there are not ads plastered all over this. Those are two really big reasons right there. But on top of that, it also uses a lot of the things in Google search when you're trying to find titles. So when you're searching, you can add different movie titles to watch list from your phone or from your laptop. And then when you sit down at night and you wanna watch a movie, you can go back and find those and watch them there. So it makes things really easy all around. I think the interface is a big positive with this, but talking about the physical aspect, I think they also did the best job with the design where this is going to fit on pretty much any TV. Unlike the rigid sticks like the Fire TV stick and the Mi TV stick and the Roku, which would need to have a dongle attached, this one basically is a dongle and so it can plug in any angle and I never have any problem with it fitting on a TV. So you don't have to worry about dongles, it just fits really well with every TV. 
and it actually comes in three different colors. So the remote here, this is the white one, but there's also a bluish one and a pinkish one. But with that said, the remote also has some cool features on board. So it does control your television, which is cool. You have the power button, you have the volume button, you have a mute button. And on top of that, you also have an input selection button. So I think this is a really great option here. So a lot of times, if you have a different channel set on your TV, you turn it on with whatever, with the, with the Fire TV stick, and then you realize, oh, this is on a different channel or a different input, you have to go and find the actual television remote and then change that to the right input. Having that on this, I think is an excellent option to have. Now, other than that, you also have a, a, a microphone on here. So you do have Google Assistant. And of all the assistants, I honestly think Google is the superior assistant in my opinion. But again, that's not the only thing I liked about this. So as far as video quality goes when you're watching it, it does have 4K HDR. So really high quality, has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos capabilities. So great sound, great video, great color. It really gives you an excellent experience selling at just $49. Now there are two more reasons I really like the Chromecast, but one drawback to this one, especially compared to the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, is that it doesn't have a headphone jack on there. You have Bluetooth, so you can plug in or you can connect Bluetooth earbuds, but I find that a lot of times they tend to have some lag there. So, I mean, a headphone jack would be welcomed on this remote. Regardless, the other two things I really like about this, you can integrate Google Photos really easily. So if you want a screensaver on your TV of just like a slideshow, or maybe you're having a party and you just want a slideshow up anyway. And then of course, the last feature is not actually rolled out yet, and this is Google Stadia. So this is a really cool feature. If you don't want to have a physical console, an Xbox, a PlayStation, you can instead be considering Google Stadia where you just need a Chromecast and the controller. So a lot cheaper and a lot easier to bring it around, a lot more portable. So if you're interested in that, that's a really cool option. And like I said, it's coming out in early 2021, the accessibility on this Chromecast here, but it's definitely another reason to be considering this one if you like playing games, especially on Google Stadia. So guys, those are my picks for the top five streaming sticks you can buy in 2020. Honestly, they're all fantastic options, but those are my picks from five all the way up to one for my favorite streaming sticks. Comment down below. Let me know which ones you like better and why. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.